I turned one last time before disappearing around a bend to see the orange hazards blinking back at me. Breaking down on a back road to the arse end of nowhere was not how I planned my evening. I turned to see headlights flickering on the horizon. <laughs> you look like you need a lift, lad. Oh my God, why is this man so predatory sexually? <laughs> he said. <laughs> Then I turned to the back seat and saw one thing that convinced me this was definitely not his car. All this time, I was only a few feet away from pure evil. <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Hunts! Welcome to Ghost Hunts, thank Episode you Episode for... what? Seven. Is it actually? Episode seven. Who we've come so far. We have stuck at this. Yeah, for seven hours. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> Which, quite frankly, <laughs> is astounding. It is. And none of us have died from yeah. being haunted. We've really committed. Oh. And you're still alive, <laughs> even though uh, <laughs> you're still alive, even though last week you fucking lied in the in the trying to contact I'm a the bit dead. Of a liar. And you never got any permission to enter the liar, enter liar, the, pants on fire. <laughs> Your head looks like it's on fire. Yeah. I don't know. That was supposed Flame. to be. Flame. Not supposed to be. Flame. It's supposed to be offensive. <laughs> You do look like What's a, offensive? You do look like a slutty Pippi Longstocking. <laughs> Pippi a... Longstocking coming into your arm. So it's like a nonce's wet dream, isn't it? Yeah, I'll complete. Oh, I don't think Probably we can do that. Probably won't uh, say that. Oh, icky. I never said that. Icky, Pippi Longstocking. Um, coming all over your face. <laughs> no? <laughs> I, I can't. No? Anyone? Hello? <laughs> Anymore. <laughs> this thing on? <laughs> <laughs> it's not me, it's the rest of the world. <laughs> it's Sarah Sarita from last okay. week. Okay, so how's your week been? Have you had a good time? I've had a lovely time. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling flame. Gra sorry? Flame. I'm feeling flame. That's what the kids are saying. Ah, oh, with that fucking emoji. Yeah, the emoji. Like you're feeling lit. Oh no, does lit mean drunk? I thought so. Barney, lit... you're, you're younger than us. How old are you? Yeah, but I don't go to parties. <laughs> How old good. are you, Barney? I'm 26. Oh, Barney, you should know what lit means. Yeah, it's like it's good. Oh. Lit is good. I thought lit meant um, high on cocaine. <laughs> I thought it meant pissed, to be honest. I thought it meant oh, really? like you were you were on. I'm something. lit. Yeah, you're lit. Like I'm fucked, <laughs> battered, battered. You know what I mean? Ba As we say in the nurse. Tar. Um, okay, so you're you're lit. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm not lit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you're not flame. Lit. You're a flame emoji. I'm flame. Okay. I'm flame. Um, how are you? I'm great, thank you. Everything's yeah. just really, really great. Yeah, everything's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did a lot of driving which is uh, quite frankly minging. Um but yeah I really no, you like... know what I really respect people who can drive <laughs> sorry no I do that's a really low bar can you not drive well I, I didn't know that I Otherwise, got my license in friends. 2016 and um, I've never driven since are you fucking kidding me well mind you how where do you, don't you come from London yeah so you're the second person I've ever met that comes from London really yeah one is the man I'm seeing and the second is you oh and wow. you are the only people that I know that come from London. Yeah. Which is really Apparently weird. we're like a rare breed. Yeah, incredibly rare. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised yeah. that there are even people left in Grew up in West London, London and like, that's why I don't really need need a car. And you've never needed one. But I, I'm kind of, I kind of regret that. I feel like I should have really picked it up and practiced because... I know, but well, you, can go and, you can go and rent a car if you need to. I know, but I shouldn't. My my instructor said, technically, you've passed. <laughs> the examiner even. He was like, technically, you've passed, but you shouldn't drive. <laughs> so what he said? <laughs> he was like, like I have to, let, literally, I have to pass you because you did all the that things. That is so funny. But like, I get very like distracted. Like I think I might like be a, a bit moth. ADHD. Like I've, I'm a bit like, oh, a poodle. <laughs> I'm like... Ah. <laughs> ah, I love it. So, no, Susie, you're like, yay, pass my head. And he's like, no, Susie, listen. He's like, now I know you've passed. Please, please, please never, please Kids never. Kids will die. <laughs> yeah. Elderly yeah. will die. Yeah. Dog there will are too many. There's too many tragedies. Yeah, and I can too feel many it. Memorials. Like when we were like doing fifty, and like well, even my instructor, lovely guy Phil, and he was always just like three to four, and I was like, I don't want to go into four, Phil, and he was like three to four. And then four to five. And I was like, yeah. I want to stay in three. Yeah. I only feel safe in three. Why do you? Oh, that's madness. And he was like, four doesn't mean faster. And I was like, no, it, it feels doesn't. faster to me. I don't like it. It's loose. It's loose on the gear. It, it's loose, but it's loose for a reason. Yeah, and I know. And I didn't like it. And he, I had a whiz. Was the car not going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Change like, gear, please, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I feel like I'm more of an automatic kind of gal. Right. So, like a go-kart. 
oh no, I'm bad at those. Uh, yeah, I actually spun that's the, that's around. That's what an automatic car is. <clears throat> yeah, well, I shouldn't drive is what I'm saying. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm never going to race. I'm, a, I'm a train girl. Uh, I, I drive quite a lot. No. But I like it. I think it's quite an attractive quality in everyone who a drives. A couple of people have said that, which is uh, a bit weird. If I'm no, honest, I, I think so. Weird. And anyone I know who drives, I'm like, respect. respect. Yeah. R-E-S-P's. Mm. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of So driving, well done. It's been horrible. But um, I slapped myself in the face the other night because Were I was driving. I, was, I wasn't falling asleep, but I was like, I was a bit wired and I was like, is this all a dream? Am I dead? Have I crashed? You know what I mean? I was freaking myself out a little bit because I've been getting a certain speed on the same road behind the same fucking car for about an hour. And I really started freaking myself out, so I just started to give myself a little slap. Do you, like, wind the window down and start <coughs> playing? I'm always smoking, so, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, smoking helps you stay awake beyond the... Anyway. Uh, I, don't think I don't think that's probably the advice that we should be giving. <coughs> I don't love want to we, die on the road. We say that oh. as if people are listening and oh, no. for advice on this the fucking advice. podcast. Okay. Are we ready to do some yeah. scary stories? Do you mm, have one? My stomach just rumbled. I think I'm hungry. I'm starving. Are you? <coughs> I'm ready for some stories. Um, do you want to kick us off? I'll kick us off, yeah. Let's kick us off. Okay. Diana, it said. Who's Diana? Oh. My little girl asked. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> they're, they're really well done for um, ruining the atmosphere. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, start shit. Again, sorry. Start again, start okay. again, start again. The story is called Diana. Princess of Wales, princess of our hearts. <laughs> That was like Royalist Tourette's. <laughs> you even looked surprised then. You, you went, you went, you went in, you went, Princess, Princess, of, what was it? Princess of Wales, Princess of our heart. Oh, so funny. <laughs> and then you even went, shocked. She was like, Princess Diana, maybe you're being haunted by Princess Diana. I'm being possessed by Diana. Oh my God. It was the Queen. <sighs> she did it. <laughs> oh my god we are tackling some very controversial <laughs> subjects in this podcast who'd have thought it Diana it says who's Diana my little girl asked I don't know sweetheart clearly lying I knew exactly who she was my childhood friend she died in medical procedure gone wrong I don't know why I find that funny but she still speaks to me in the darkness of my closet her glowing eyes are all that I see of her now just those awful eyes piercing from the darkest depths of my closet. But I never thought she'd do this. Not to my little girl. Scratched on her hardwood floor of her bedroom was the name Diana. The afternoon went on as usual after that, until nightfall. I put my daughter to sleep and began the walk into my bedroom. With each step, her whispering becomes louder and louder until I stand in front of my closet. The door wide open, Diana's glowing white eyes pierce the black void that is my... I think she's got some very serious mental health issues. This woman. Don't we all? Oh, her name's Sophie. Mm. You shouldn't have abandoned me, Sophie. Her scratchy voice echoes. I'm sorry, Diana, but that was years ago now. I said with a nervous giggle. Don't nervously giggle to the fucking ghost that's haunting your closet. You let me die in there, she replied. Tears began to stream down my face. I'm so sorry, Diana, I said, bubbling through my tears. One of the most disgusting Ooh, things I've great. ever heard. It hurts, you know, she said. It burned my skin, sizzled my insides. It made me nothing but dust. You let them do that to me, Sophie, she said angrily. Diana, I'm sorry, I don't know what else to say. I bubbled. What's this bubbled thing? What is going is it, on? It's burbled, but, but bubbled, but yeah. Well, basically, she's seen that in her daughter's room and she talks to this woman okay. regularly, but now Diana's pissed. Right. Mummy, said a shrill voice from behind me. I turn around to see my daughter. Oh, baby. Blech. I say, wiping away tears. I'm so sorry. D did we wake you? I try to say to her. We? There is no one else there, she says. I can hear the fear in her voice. You know, sweetie, it's very late, and only grown up should be up this late, so let's go back to bed. I reply reassuringly. I walk her back to her room and tuck her in. Good night, sweetie. I said, what's with all these horrible sweetie names? Sweetie baby. Sweetie baby. baby sweetie mm -hmm. bubbly. P oh. Good night, sweetie. I say before turning around and walking back to my room. I went back in there and went back to my closet. I stared at Diana's eyes staring at me from out of the closet. Look at what they did to me. A scratchy voice replies. Oh God, Diana. What happened? I say with terror. A medical procedure, they told you, I bet. 
No, it wasn't that at all. They wanted to harm me. They strapped me to a chair and almost drowned me in light. What? They knew what would happen to me if they put me in light. But no matter how loud I screamed, they didn't turn them off. Diana replied in anger. They reduced me to ashes, she said. They called me the disappearing woman. She screamed, tears began to roll down my face again. The sight of my oldest friend in this state killed me. They killed me, Sophie, and it's all your fault. Suddenly, Diana just vanishes. No trace of her, until I hear the scream. The scream of my little girl. I ran to her room to see the lights off in the silhouette of Diana on top of my daughter's bed. The screams got louder until I hear a bone crack. Oh, no. Now, I'm all you have, Sophie. Diana whispered before the light turned back on and she disappears. Lying on the bed was the body of my daughter. Her neck snapped and her eyes were nowhere to be seen. Oh, no, it's a throwback. It's always going to be a throwback to Lynn. <gasps> She'll haunt every episode. But no blood at all. A clean swipe and they were out. A clean swipe? Clean swipe. Clean swipe. <laughs> could you, I could do that with these names. Anna's just done a hollowing motion <laughs> with her hands. Yeah, like I'm like getting ice like, cream like the pumpkin. <laughs> oh, getting the flesh out of that pumpkin, baby. <laughs> Uh, I screamed louder, sorry, louder than I ever thought I could, but then a comforting voice filled the air. It's okay, Sophie, said Diana. The end. I have questions, to be honest. I, have, I haven't got a clue no. what was going on in that, but um, the imagery was great. Yeah. <coughs> but I think, I, it's the light thing that confused me. I think what's happened is Diana was a vampire. Uh, and her and Sophie oh. were friends. <laughs> you know, the logical explanation. <laughs> like Diana vampire. was a vampire and Sophie was a friend. I think if we're going... Have you ever seen the film The Little Vampire? Nope. <laughs> what, with Richard E. Grant? No. You, Barney? No. Are you kidding me? It's a great film. And that little, you know, that little American kid with the glasses and the lisp. He was really cute. He was always the kid in all the little films. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was friends with a, with a little vampire and uh, I think this is the same as Sophie and Diana and that Diana is the vampire, Sophie was the friend and then Di um, the, the village people lynched Diana uh, and put her in the sun and then she turned into ashes. But they told Sophie it was a medical procedure because nobody actually wanted to admit that she was a vampire and now Diana's really mad. <clears throat> or it's a metaphor for the royal family. <laughs> <laughs> Read into it how you will. Go on then. But Sophie's the queen. Right. Diana's. Diana's Diana. Spoiler, Diana. Um, the village people, the press. Yeah? <laughs> Dragging sorry. her out. For the second, the light. I thought you meant YMCA. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, didn't mention the village people. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> I reacted. <laughs> you I did. did. I did. Um, it is. Yeah. No, that's. Get back in your closet. <laughs> mm. Close it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> press chased her, and then there was a car accident. Yes, and the kid in the bed, Megan. So. Oh my gosh! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Megan's not dead. Well. <laughs> You're suggesting that, like, not yet. on this Megan and Harry documentary, Harry's like stuck his Spoiler. hand up a back or something and just used her as a puppet. <laughs> she's actually dead. Oh no, she's alive in the dock. But <coughs> soon to be dead. To be fair, we don't we haven't seen her since yesterday. I don't really think we should talk about that. Uh, move on. I think the royalists are <coughs> going to come for us. Yes, let's move on. Have you got a story? I do. Uh, there's three choices. Right. Number one, my hitchhiking nightmare that scared me for life. Oh, love that, yeah. Number two, there's something imitating my six-year-old son. Oh. Or three, Bambi. And it ain't the Disney film. Are we going to hear them all at some point over the episodes? Yeah. Okay, what I'm going to. I want like? one, please. <clears throat> Number one. Yeah, I love a hitchhiker story. Okay. Because I think uh, you fucking deserve it. <laughs> anyone, anyone you that picks up a hitchhiker, <laughs> you Barney, deserve it, Barney. Anyone that picks up a hitchhiker deserves to be fucking haunted. Have you ever picked one up? No, because I'm not an idiot. Have you ever seen one? I feel like you've picked one. one. <laughs> no, well, you've I just can't got very drive. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> Do you know what? I'm the kind no, of person that would. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we were driving, you'd be like, oh, come on. And I'd be like, are you fucking kidding me? For the bants, I would. Yeah. For the bants. For the story. Her. 
Um, I don't think I've ever seen someone. I've like seen people hitchhiking quite often, actually. Aren't they like smelly hippies? You want to go to no, Glastow? Well, these people, that, well, no, not really. I mean, what, in December? <laughs> Just getting them real early. Nine months. Not December. <laughs> We're recording this in fucking December. Shh. January. Not in January. Smoking mirrors. Um. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them see behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's enough of that. We've yeah, had too much too fun, much, and yeah. it's it's enough now. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> My hitchhiking nightmare that scared me for life. It was a Tuesday evening in February 1996 when driving back through Bodmin Moor, when I experienced the most traumatic evening in my life, and this is my account. The sky was a sombre grey and had smothered any moonlight as evening fell along with any warmth. I could feel the chill in my bones as I paced briskly with my hands tucked firmly in my pockets. Breaking down on a back road to the arse end of nowhere was not how I planned my evening. I turned one last time before disappearing around a bend to see the orange hazards blinking back at me in the knowledge that Diane was at least in some comfort waiting for me to return with help. That's weird, isn't it? It's also weird that I picked it. Double die. Uh, <laughs> I'd left the heater on for her, but it wouldn't be long before that diminished or a flat battery. The tall silhouette of... Have you got what's going on? Not really, no. Okay. So he's broken down. Right. On the side of the road, uh, on the arse end of nowhere, mm. near Bodmin on, Moor. On the arse end. Uh, on the arsehole. <laughs> Do you know where I like to go driving? On the arsehole. The ar- <laughs> my favourite place drive to drive. Drive over my asshole. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> that's the category on Pornhub if I've ever heard as well. So Diane, so he's with Diane in the car, they've broken down and he's left her in the car with the heating on and he's like, I'm going to go get help. Oh, I see. Okay, fine. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> not, if, not quite, but if the car's broken down, then you can't have the heating on. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'd left the heater on for her, but oh look, can you please put a fucking sock in it and <laughs> Do you wear the fucking AA? <laughs> Just go with it. AA or AAA? Triple A, triple A. Right. Are you ready to carry AAA on? Triple A batteries. Triple A. <laughs> Yeah, having a nice time. (laughs) The tall silhouette of trees either side of the road peered down at me like angry gods in the dark. Oh. It was only my fifth date with Diane, but it was everything I hoped it would be. I just hoped this inconvenience had not altered her opinion of me. I'd walked... It's not his fault. I'd I'd be a bit annoyed, I think. You'd be a bit peeved, but you wouldn't blame it on him. But to be fair, at least I didn't have to do the walking. Yeah, he's he's turned on the heater, which is okay. Fair enough. And fine. I mean, completely uh, unrealistic, but yeah. I'd walked a good two miles now. <laughs> Skating over that. I'd walked a good two miles now and the cold had made camp on my face. <gasps> what? Um, The cold had made camp on my face, as in the cold is on his face. It oh, it's set, it pitched a set up camp yeah, on his yeah. right. Listen, this guy. Stupid. Yeah, yeah. Someone's got a fucking dictionary out, haven't they? Yeah, someone did. Someone did English Lit GCSE. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's done creative writing courses <laughs> somewhere in a weird little college, not at school, because that's not a thing. <laughs> college. <laughs> it was eerily quiet as well, with just the nocturnal noises of wildlife bellowing around the woods either side of me. I picked up the pace, and I could feel my lungs burning with each quick but long stride I took. I then came to a crest and sprinted to the top, like it was the top of a mountain, but as I reached the summit, my hopes were crushed. I stopped to get my breath and rest my hands on my knees as I peered into the void. There were no lights anywhere on the horizon, and as far as I could make out, it was another three miles of back road to God knows where. I yelled in anger at the top of my lungs, and my voice echoed round the woods. I hope Diane is not too cold. <laughs> <laughs> Were my thoughts. Ripping open his shirt. <laughs> I, I hope she's at a medium body temperature. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Diane's okay. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Fuck off, This mate. is great. Fuck I off. love this. Uh, you're never going to guess his name, by the way. Edward. It's coming. It begins with C. Oh, can I have a guess? Curtis. No. C- Connor. No, no, no Conrad. American sounds Con. Bodmin Moor, mate. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> um, cry, 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 Christopher, Christ, oh. Christ, Jesus Christ, his name Christ. <laughs> it's Jesus Christ and Diana, Princess of Wales. Very appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. 
actually. I hope Diane's not too I cold. Didn't, I didn't see this going this way. It's very weird. Cry, 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 Christopher. Cry, Christian. Chris, car. Chris, cry, car, 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 Carl, Carl. It's yeah, Carl. It's Carl. Yes, I didn't think that's you at all, but yeah, Carl. Yeah, great, cool. Carl. Not Christ, then. <laughs> A shame. Um, <laughs> okay, two hours ago, we were sat by an open fire in a village pub, sipping wine and whispering conversations oh, that gave me butterflies, I love that. like young love does. Oh, and everyone's, you know, you're aroused. Like, yeah, everyone's aroused. Yeah. You're kind, of, you're kind of giggling at stories that you wouldn't normally yeah. giggle at. Oh, my God, yeah, like this is the funniest. Yeah, and then ever. you get your second wine and then you're starting to feel a bit Oh, love, no, and... I just, second bottle. <laughs> Uh-huh. the meth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we crack out the meth. <laughs> and then I get my crack pipe out and, oh, it's so romantic. Young love. Ah. Well, it gets a bit crazy that we start injecting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now here I was, meth. running in the dark with no clue where I was heading. I needed a phone. I needed some warmth. But most of all, I just wanted this evening to be over. Oh. I checked my watch, 11.55 p.m. Maybe, I thought, I could just return to the car and wait till morning. At least, I've had, at least I'd have some company. I turned around and peered back, but there was no sign of the blinkers. I knew I'd gone too far now, but somehow looking back made me feel some sense of comfort. I carried on, muttering to myself about how stupid I felt about breaking down, playing each moment minute by minute and wondering if I'd missed a sound, a mechanical sound, something I ignored. To make things worse, I had no tools in the car. You idiot, Carl. Carl, you silly, silly man. Silly, silly man. I tried to keep a brisk pace, but my lungs had other ideas and my nose was leaking halfway down my face from the car. <coughs> leaking? It's getting oh, a bit Blair Witch, disgusting. isn't it? Ugh. And then I heard a familiar noise behind me. I turned to see headlights flickering on the horizon and my hopes were suddenly raised. It was probably you fucking picking him up. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, I oh, get it. <laughs> He's raising his thumb. That's a hitchhiker. Get in. <laughs> um, I actually failed my theory. <laughs> <laughs> Who fails the theory? I was so Which part trigger happy with fail? seeing uh, the hazards. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, I saw them so early and they were like, no, sorry, you were doing it to like, just click. Like, <laughs> that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like this noise. This is a fun game. <laughs> it's like Mario Kart. It's just tricky having with it. Yeah. And then, like, I could see all the hazards really early, and I got penalised. I thought it was really unfair. Anyway, but they're not a hazard until they reach a certain point. That's why you failed. Speak. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I, I don't know why I'm banging on so much about car rules. Jesus. I literally roll cigarettes, smoke them, drink out. I, I like drive with my knees. No, but I'm not a good driver. You do make a good point, though. I, I saw, like, you know, I saw a beach ball from fucking Malvern. Yeah, everything's like, a hazard Whoa! if you look at it that way. Yeah, it's true. No, you know, they, they failed me for a good reason. So Carl's seeing headlights and he feels relieved. I positioned myself as far into the road as I dare in the hope of getting their attention and waved my extended arm. Did you like that? Uh, the car slow. No, I, I didn't. If you're listening, I just wave my hand because I like to <laughs> animate it as I go. The car slowed down, much to my relief, and pulled alongside. A man in a dark coloured BMW. Ooh, do we trust a BMW? Never. 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 This is the first red Never. flag. Yeah, 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 yeah. A man in a dark Bell-ends, coloured. Bellens make. Bellens uh, McWanker. McWanker. <laughs> yeah. Famous. As we should coin that. Bellend McWanker. Spread the word. So true. A man in a dark coloured Bellend McWanker drew down his window and smiled at me. <laughs> you look like you need a lift, lad. Oh my God. Why is this man so predatory sexually? <laughs> he said. <laughs> you got turned on by that, didn't you? I, I did a bit of it. You look like you need a lift. Lad. Oh, stop it. Carl nodded quickly. Oh, you're a lifesaver. Thanks. I smiled back. Hop in then. <laughs> no. He said. He was a middle-aged man. I guessed about mid-40s with greying hair, clean-shaven with a, a corporate look about it's him. really my type, actually. <laughs> yeah. Certainly he was well-tailored in a dark suit. Maybe he's a salesman, I thought. So he looks like a salesman, but he sounds like a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get in, lad. Yeah, get in there, lad. Um, I <laughs> don't know why I'm... That's such a good I'm, accent. I'm going to do it. I'm That's do it for... really good. Get in there, lad. Oh, it's so true. That's great, Mark. That's really good. <laughs> um, I nestled into the black leather seat. Mm. 
and immediately felt the warmer. I bet he's got um under. Well, yeah, see, he, yeah, it feels like you pissed your pants. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, doesn't I it? hate. I you hate. Feel like an accident see. has yeah, taken place. Yeah. Um. Because as we said before, I do often piss myself anyway. Yeah. Like, oh, let in, look, in your like car. every cough is a bit of wee. Yes. So if I'm in a heated seat, I get really worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever been horse riding? Yeah. I don't like it. Do you? Not really. No. I've only been. Like, I find it completely unnecessary. I hate it. Yeah, I think it's the worst thing ever, and it does make you feel like you have wet yourself on the horse. Yeah, I know what you mean because there's a burning feeling. Yeah, you know, Ugh, from your grim. loins. Anyway, hmm. okay. Um, I nestled into the black leather seat and immediately felt the warm air surround me like a well-needed blanket. I then thought about Diane, alone in my car with the temperature dropping with each minute. I delayed in getting help. I wanted him to hurry up and drive off, but he was hell-bent on engaging in conversation at the side of the road. <clears throat> Thanks for stopping. Um, it's been a bit of a nightmare tonight, I explained, moving my hands towards the heater. That your Ford Escort I passed a few miles back? He asked, pointing behind him. I nodded. Yes, the damn thing broke down on me. Couldn't have been the main road. Oh no, that would be too convenient, I grinned. Breaking down is never convenient in my book. <laughs> Fuck off. What is this guy talking about? I turned to the driver and asked, did you happen to see my girlfriend in the car as you drove past? No, I don't. I asked, five dates. Yeah, fucking calm down, Carl. Yeah, come on, Carl. He's already put her in the girlfriend. That, you haven't had that conversation. You five have dates. no right, Carl, come to on, call Carl. a girlfriend. That's embarrassing, Carl. If Diane's alive, if she hasn't been fucking yeah, exactly. murdered by this nutcase, then right. she's going to have something to say about that. Yeah. There was someone in the passenger seat, yeah. <laughs> I felt a small sense of relief. The driver extended a hand. I'm Victor. Victor Mace. Victor Mace? Mace. That's re Why is all these stories yeah. tying in together? I remembered him saying. I shook his hand. It was a damn sight warmer than mine. Victor turned to me, his arm resting on the wheel. You're lucky I took the shortcut tonight. <laughs> Usually stick to the main road, but I'm late tonight. Why is Victor so sexy? I figured this road would kill off a good seven miles. <laughs> I nodded with a smile, but inside I was yelling, go, I haven't got all night. But how can I be rude to the one person who might actually save me tonight and quite possibly save my relationship? It's not a relationship, it's not Carl. A relationship. It's five dates, Carl. It's five and dates. And she had meth. Yeah, exactly. Oh, like, they didn't have meth to do. <laughs> they had wine in a pub. They had but, wine and meth in a but pub. But the crack pipe was out. Yeah. Um, I looked at my watch as a subtle cue to my urgency, but unfortunately it went unnoticed. So... How come you're out this late on a road like this? Ah, 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 More chit chat I didn't need. I can't get over this accent, it's so good! <laughs> I cleared my throat and felt my hands rubbing the top of my jeans in anxiety, willing the car to go. What? Um, yeah, he's rubbing his he's rubbing his jeans. He's rubbing the top of his thighs. Oh, uh, we went to the village pub just off the B road and I, I took a wrong turning, but I figured if I carried on, it will eventually meet up with the main road, I told him. Victor shook his head at me. No, it won't. It's completely irresponsible. He replied. Oh, so where does this road go then, I asked. But inside I didn't give a shit if it went to Timbuktu as long as I could get to a house or a farm to call for help. Over the moors, he replied. You looking for a phone then, lad? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> in, so the, I, in the same tone as you looking so for I a could, good time, lad. <laughs> looking for a phone then, lad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for some meth, lad. Why is it so sexy? <laughs> you you like a Cornish sexy. salesman, don't you? Apparently that is oh, my thing. Oh, shit. Apparently that's my thing. Um, yeah, yeah, I am. I, so I can call someone out, I pointed straight ahead. So, so if you just drive until we find a house or a garage, I'd, I'd really appreciate it. I just don't want to leave my girlfriend in the car too long. That's like, backseat that's driving and that's not on. Victor, Carl. Victor set off, much to my relief. I have a phone at home you can use if you like. It's about a 20-minute drive. I can also offer you a hot drink and return you to your car, <laughs> he said. Thanks, if it's not too much trouble, that's, that's very kind, I replied. And, and now we were making headway, I felt some obligation to make conversation. So, um, what keeps you out this late on a Tuesday evening, I asked. Victor turned to me. Work. Just work. Oh, okay, what is it you do, I asked curiously. Victor hooked eyes with me before returning them to the road, still bleak and without light. You warm enough, lad? I'm so scared. He asked, ignoring my last question. I can turn up the heat some more if you'd like. <laughs> Thanks, but I I'm okay now, I replied. I tried again at making conversation. At the end of the day, here I was in the middle of nowhere in a car with a total stranger. I found myself fidgeting in the chair, mainly out of some sense of anxiety. 
I had you down as a salesman. I think it's a suit. I, I'm a freelance photographer, so casual <coughs> is my go-to attire. I joked. Victor said nothing. He just looked across at me and then returned his attention to the road. I felt my left hand caressing the leather bolster and my eyes searching the door for a latch. Yeah, the leather bolster sounds like a gun holder, doesn't oh, it? Oh, cock. Does it? <laughs> oh, cock. <laughs> or pain. It sounds, yeah, it sounds like, <laughs> sounds like a euphemism. Just for his dick. Yeah. I was <laughs> I, touching, I, I was holding my... I started caressing cock. my cock. <laughs> Because Victor, to be fair, is very sexy. very sexy. Even in that BMW, you know it's wrong, but it's right. He's very sure of himself. That's what I like mm. about Victor. Victor does. And he won't take shit from anyone. Yeah, he's honey badger. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. We haven't got time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. What? Did you I want? love honey badger. I don't know what you're talking about. Honey badger doesn't give a shit. Honey badger just takes what it wants. Do you know honey badger? I've no idea what you're talking about now. You haven't seen Honey Badger? No. Honey Badger is like this little animal who just doesn't give a fuck. Okay. And it like eats snakes. And it like attacks bees' I feel like you should give a fuck. And like, actually, that is my animal. It's not a ferret. <laughs> Sorry, a Honey Badger. Yeah, I'm a Honey Badger. Okay. Um, uh, anyway, back, 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 back to it. Um, <clears throat> so he's, he's touching the door latch. My brain was trying to calculate the chances of surviving a fall at this speed if I was to open the door for a quick getaway. I was beginning to feel the full weight of what real paranoia felt like and I didn't like the taste. I looked down to my right to where my seatbelt was anchored. How quickly could I disconnect the seatbelt, open the door and roll out? I've seen it a million times in the movie. In the movies. <laughs> the movie. I've seen it all the <laughs> <laughs> seen it a million times in the movies but it seemed a thousand times scary in real life oh, stop being silly I told myself how is Diane <laughs> sorry <laughs> stop being silly. I hope she's not uncomfortable <laughs> just screaming into the moors <laughs> um, stop being silly I told myself he's obviously just a private person uh, but somehow I found myself asking more questions will your uh, family be up at this hour Victor turned to me again I don't have a family. I live alone. Yeah, it doesn't surprise I me. I much prefer it that way, lad. Yeah, <laughs> with all my dead bodies. <laughs> yeah, with the bad days. I decided to withdraw from any further questions and settled into the seat with my thoughts again turning to Diane alone in the car. <gasps> I, can I predict the ending? Go on. I think Diana's in the boot. Oh. Dead. <clears throat> Maybe. Maybe. Um, it had been an hour now, and I was anxious to return to her as soon as possible, but then my eyes fell on his keys swinging from the ignition barrel. I hadn't noticed it before. A small photo keyring and a blue unicorn toy. It was a strange thing to have for a man with no family. Yeah. My curiosity was now like a naughty child seeking attention and difficult to ignore, so to that end I had to make an excuse to use the interior light. Do you mind if I switch the light on for a second? I, I think I might have got oil on my best shirt when I was trying to fix the car. My girlfriend will freak. I laughed, lying through my teeth. Sure. He replied coldly with no reciprocal or jovial comment. I flicked the interior light on for a moment, pretending to check my shirt tails, but my eyes were firmly fixed on the swinging keychain with the unicorn toy. I only had a small window of opportunity where the light and the angle of the photo keyring were aligned to the point where I could see it clearly. It was the headshot of a middle-aged couple on a tropical beach somewhere and between them stu stood a young girl of about three or four. But then as the keyring swung round to the momentum of the car, I grabbed a glimpse of the writing on the back, Jackson's Bar, Barbados. My eyes were then drawn to something in a footwell which I hadn't noticed in the dark. A head. <clears throat> yeah, it's Diane. <laughs> <laughs> Diane, <laughs> leave it down there. Diane, why, why are you by my feet? Um, a white envelope with an address on that was not even in the same county. Even more unnerving was the name on the envelope, Mr and Mrs Reynolds. Something felt very wrong. I couldn't help myself but ask an obvious question. You travel much? I then followed it up with another lie. I get to travel to some nice places with my work. The Caribbean is just incredible. Have you ever been? Victor left his eyes on the road and replied, Nope. <laughs> Fucking hell. All right. I had a gut feeling and an urgency to probe some more. You have any children? I, I'd like kids one day, I said nervously. Nope. Victor replied. 
By now, my gut feeling had transcended to a full-on fear. I could feel my heart beating in my throat and could not shake the feeling that this somehow was not his car. My thoughts turned once more to jumping out my paranoia played tricks on me. Victor then slowed the car and turned into a narrow drive off the back road. It was a small red brick bungalow surrounded by an abundance of overgrown shrubs and bushes. An exterior light flicked on and bathed the front in a yellow tinge. This was not a well-kept property. The large front windows were obscured with sheets of newspaper stuck to the inside, faded and yellowed. Victor undid his seatbelt. Wait here, lad. I just need to sort something before you come in. Victor rolled out the car and made his way to the front door. I didn't like this at all. My whole body screamed, get the fuck out of here. But our fight, flight or freeze, my body was firmly logged in freeze. But then I turned to the back seat and saw one thing that convinced me this was definitely not his car. A baby seat. I don't like that at all. I didn't even want to try and imagine why he had this car. All I knew now was that I couldn't step one foot in that place for fear it would be my last. I glanced across and saw the keys still in the ignition. Adrenaline hit me like a junkie's fix. And he would know. If I don't make a move now, I never will. I shot a look to the front door, still ajar, and leapt across to the driver's seat, my hands trembling as I fumbled the keys. I started the engine and hit reverse, spinning off into the middle of the road before slamming it into first. I laughed hard, but it was a nervous laugh and nothing remotely humorous about the situation I had just avoided. My hands were shaking hard and the adrenaline had sent me into a state of shock. I headed back as fast as I dare, back towards Diane. By now the winter sky gave way to sleet, which danced in the headlights like sparkly diamonds. My eyes fixed on the rear view mirror, expecting oh no. to a set of lights to give chase. But why would they? There was no other vehicle on the drive. I thumped the wheel. Fuck you, I yelled, with tears falling down my face. Is this a bit of an overreaction from him? Because all these places they've done is seen, he could have borrowed the car. Yeah, he's just seen some newspaper and now in like, the window. Ah! Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah the weird. baby seat, though. Mm, could have borrowed it, though. Yeah, yeah, maybe he is overreacting. I think it's an over. Anyway, carry on. I yelled, uh, with tears falling down my face. I had a plan. Pick up Diane, go home, and in the morning I'd visit the police station. But as my mind circled with a thousand thoughts, the car suddenly jerked to the right and I fought the steering, narrowly missing the thick hedgerow at the side of the road. Oh, shit. I sprung out the driver's seat and gazed in frustration at the flat tyre. Fuck! I yelled oh, again. Oh, no. I figured I was only two or three miles away from Victor. I had a choice. Limp back to my car with the flat or change it here. I figured I'd take my chances and fix it here. That way, me and Diane could just head straight home. I pulled the keys from the ignition and popped the boot for the spare. It wasn't there, was it? It was then my whole world came crashing down around me. All this time, I was only a few feet away from pure evil. There in the boot lay the body of Diane. With her throat cut, her eyes glazed, yes! staring straight at me. It was Close! the worst night of my life. Yeah! Sorry, you did I ruin that? It. Yeah, I mean, for any listener, yeah. But, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You got it. Mate, that, that was girl. very good. Very good. Loved it. Absolutely terrifying. Oh, I loved that. That was great. Victor, but was, you know, fucking... Victor, sexy little serial killer, so, Victor. That was sexy. Oh, Bodmin Moore. Sexy, yeah, on Bodmin Moore. Um, this is a nice um, turnaround because the hitchhiker was the killer. No, the hitchhike E. Yeah. Oh, what you mean? Usually, it's the one who's driving. Usually, it's one that's no. It's usually the one's getting in the car. Well, that yeah. But it wasn't, was it? It was fixed at this time. He picked him up. Oh yeah, true. Boom! Yeah. I smashed it. it. Loved that so much. Love Loved it. it so much. Yeah, it was Um, but she, she probably slit her own throat because she was like, "I don't want to be your fucking girlfriend <laughs> after five fucking dates, you dozy shit." And then saw Victor and was like, "Oh, hello." Exactly. Well, thank you uh, for joining us once again for another episode of Ghost Town. Do we not have time? Do we have to? Have... Oh, no. Yeah, no, we're done now. We need to We're go. done. Yeah, okay. we're done. Um, with Sorry, yeah, thank you for joining us. <laughs> me, Diane, Diana, die, 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 <laughs> Very Diana. Very die heavy. Uh, die. Thank, you, thank you all very much for joining us. See you next time. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye.